it's, not, it's very official now, right? Nice. I well, hello everybody. So I'm Michael. My partner Solomon is on too, and I'm super excited. We've done a few of these for Remember Solutions over the past couple months, but this is the first time where we've all kind of been live together. So I was talking to the team before we started, and you know, we I, I think we all learn best when we all share and contribute. So you know, Mr. Brenner and I have a couple things to talk about, but then I kind of want to make it a conversation, and you know, we can all brainstorm and share ideas and go from there. Does that sound good? Love it. I see some head nods and some thumbs up. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Cool. So, Mr. Brenner, let's get started kind of right away. And I know so the theme for today, of course, is, you know, planning for the summertime and summer success. And Mr. Brenner, you know, we were talking about this with our schools and the collective the past couple of weeks, but really having the right mindset of what should happen in the summertime. Um, do you want to kind of start with that and then we'll go from there? Absolutely. So I think many, many schools across the country, and we, again, we've been doing this for 27 years and... One of our favorite things to do is visit karate schools across the country and make sure we're networking and learning best practices. And I find the schools that have trouble during the summer, it's not because it's summer, it's because of the way we've all been programmed during the summer, right? Like it all started with school and, you know, summertime was we're off of school, we're not studying, we're not doing our homework, we're not doing anything, we're just like playing. And as adults, it kind of translates over the same way for our own mindset. We're kind of like checked out a little bit. It might be a little different this year with the post-pandemic rush, but I think for the most part, it's easy to be checked out and we have to just be like super careful. If anything, we probably have to work a little bit harder because you're having family members and students checking out, you know, they're going on vacation, they're going to camp and they're tired. So you probably have to work a little bit harder to maintain the retention. Um, as well as people that are kind of putting things off the start in, you know, September, October. So we probably have to work a little bit harder. But at the end of the day, if we do, I mean, our schools pretty much stay the same throughout the summer. I don't think we have any like big dips or anything. However, they are, instead of going to elementary schools to do school talks, they're doing school talks at camps and preschools and daycares and stuff like that. So they're doing all the same stuff. And it's probably on some level somewhat easier to even do it right because it's easier to get into for the most part to get into camps and township programs and we do a lot of parades uh carnivals it's easier to get into that stuff than it is to you know public schools for many of the districts so you know it's our mindset that i think is broken if you're having you know if you think of the summer as like uh summer it's going to take a dip or it's going to be slow you know it's our mindset not really the way it is it's just the way we think about it Yeah, 100%. It's, it's super interesting talking to some of our newer schools that I don't think have been around the industry long enough to like have that attitude where we were kind of going through their numbers this month. And they're like, oh, we only have this many new members. And in the back of my head, I was thinking, oh, well, that's probably really fine. It's June sometimes, you know, but it, it's I think if you never have that perspective to begin with, you just push harder and you, you kind of keep going. So we're going to go through some things we do in the summer to help with retention. Before I do that, though, just so I can kind of get a better sense, does anybody have trouble with summer holds? Like lots of hold requests and like not, you know, lots of people taking time off. You can either put it in the chat, yes or no, or unmute yourself, yes or no. I'll give everybody a second. Um, no, not really. Awesome. Give everybody else a second. I assume your silence means you're a complete expert at handling summer holds and a complete non-issue, which is excellent. Cool. All right, so I'm going to skip that part then. If anybody does have some questions about that, I think we handle it in a super unique way. Uh, Sarah, are you going to tell me to do it anyway? Yeah, mm -hmm. I am because you're, listen, you're not, even if you're not having that problem where you have it in the past, we're coming into a unique year, right? So mm. while we do have the rush, th this is a year that's never happened before. And I would like to hear, you know, your shortened version. How are you handling that? Because there's some people that will just put them on hold. There's some people that will extend out the contract. There are some people that are going to charge a hold fee. I'm really curious, actually. Okay, Sarah, twist my arm. Okay, I, I would love to do that for you, Sarah. Uh, Casey, can you um, just, when you get a second, I'm going to go to some other stuff first, but make sure I can share my screen because I'll share everything we give to our schools to kind of talk through it. Um, so anyway, so some things we do for retention. And Mr. Brenner, you can kind of stop me if I'm thinking everything, missing anything. But the goal for us is that our students don't forget about their martial arts training while they're away, right? And we know when people miss class, 
you know, you get out of the habit, you get out of the routine, and we didn't stay as much as possible a part of the routine. So one of the great benefits of COVID, and I'm not sure if we're still teaching virtual classes, but all of our schools still have some virtual class options, right? We're still on Zoom for something, which normally when people are away, there is no great way to train, right? You know, they're somewhere else. And we would send like homework with them and give them little assignments. But now, you know, we have some people going away for a few weeks and the conversation is, oh yeah, we'll just jump on Zoom. We'll see you there, right? So if you don't have some kind of virtual option, you know, we're kind of deciding long-term what we do with it, but not, no, none of our schools are getting rid of it over the summer because it's just an extra resource, right? So we have our live virtual classes. We also do what we call an on-demand class. So we pre-record a class each week for all of our, you know, different class segments. So they have another option. If they can't make it to an actual class time, you know, just like you can jump on your Peloton whenever you want, you can jump on your on-demand class and take that whenever you want. So that's one of, you know, talk about good things that have come out of COVID for us. That's been a complete, you know, just cool extra opportunity and game changer as far as keeping people, you know, training while they're traveling. So that's number one, right? Number two, just uh, things we've done for years and years that have worked really well. One is a postcard contest. So what we do, and there's a couple steps to this, we print out little tiny address labels and we have them hanging by, you know, the front door of the school before Casey leaves on vacation, she takes a label with her wherever she goes. She puts the label on there, mails us a postcard all summer long. We hang the postcards up. And then the end of the summer, we pick some postcards for some prizes. Right. And, you know, the postcard and the prizes, none of that truly matters for us, though. We want Johnny on vacation saying, Mom, I have to go buy a postcard. I have to send it to karate. You know, it's just another way to keep them engaged. Other things we've done. Um, so, uh, t-shirt contest. So when you go on vacation, you have to take a cool picture wearing your karate t-shirt and, you know, put it on the Facebook group or send it to your instructor. And it's the same thing. Another way to keep them thinking about it. Right. And we always have cool pictures of, you know, Susie on the beach doing her sidekick next to the lifeguard stands. And like, they're excited to send it in. Right. Um, when they go away. So Sarah tells me she's leaving on vacation. The step number one for the instructor, so we know, is we take a postcard, just like a regular, you know, mail, you know, from the post office postcard. We put her name on it. The week she's gone, we send her a postcard. So when she comes back from vacation and she's sorting through her mail, there's a postcard waiting from us that says, hey, Sarah, can't wait to see you back in class. Hope you had a great time in Disney World. So just another way, I know, right? Just, I, I know was, was going to ask you where I went because I was yeah. really curious. I know how much you love Disney, yeah. Um but right, just another way you know, for us is we got to stay top of mind, right? And especially if they're gone for more than a week, it's a few weeks. We got to find a way to, you know, keep them thinking about us. So they send us a postcard. We send them a postcard, t-shirt contest. Our logo for our school is the shark. So if, uh, has anybody heard of Flat Stanley? If you have like elementary school kids, like Stanley travels all over the place. We have Flat Sharky. So we print out a bunch of pages of our logo and we tell the kids they have to color it and take a picture of it while they're away on vacation. It's just all ways to stay top of mind. Um, since we kind of have, you know, people on the call that have schools, any other cool summer things that you do again, as far as kind of that respect goes? Mr. Brenner, anything I'm missing that we do? None of that stuff. I, while people are thinking and, and anxiously excited to raise their hand with great ideas, it should have happened a few weeks ago, probably. It was the ideal time, but today is the next ideal time is having a message of the week or less than the week or Matt chat about, hey, this is the tough time of the year for everybody because you're tired from camp or you're on vacation. It's so easy to miss class. This is when we're really looking for super strong grit team. And you know, make sure you let us know before you leave. But the ideal way to do it is come to like three or four classes a week for a couple of weeks before you go on vacation. Then when you come back, you're already caught up and then see your instructor to make sure like, you know, you know your material or something. But talking about it, and then, you know, we usually end that message of the week with, here's what we know for a fact after doing this for 27 years, team, the people that get through the summer and make it through in a strong way are always the ones who achieve their black belts. The ones that don't, it's iffy. So I want to make sure, you know, raise your hand if you're going to get through the summer, like really strong and really train hard and get it done. And they all, of course, raise their hands. Um, so just pre-framing it. And that message has to be said to the kids with the parents listening. So you need to like make sure the parents are quiet. They're looking at you. They're not on their cell phones. They're not playing with stuff. They're not talking to the other kids. So the parents are listening. And then if you want to take it a step further, you would do that same message on a Facebook live video in your private groups. 
Yeah, that's great. So that's a perfect segue into kind of the next thing I'm going to share, which is you know, what we do for the students that are still training, right? That are, you know, aren't traveling during the summer and all that pre-frame. I and mean, we hit that hard. So we, we talked about this, um, I think, with the member solution clients a few months ago about, you know, kind of the snapback. You know, we hear, I'm sure you guys are hearing the same thing. So many schools are so busy because now I forget who said it, but like a, the post-COVID bump or something someone said before we logged on today. But there's also people have more money now, you know, with all like the government money, there's, you know, pent up money. If you weren't traveling, weren't doing things. And of course, I know everyone's situation is different, but there's a lot of that. And there's also, I talked to one of our families yesterday. I'm like, any vacation plans? He's like, yeah, I booked three trips this week because, you know, they didn't travel for the past year. You know, there, it's all the pent up stuff. So what Mr. Brenner said, I mean, we had those messages week after week after week in the springtime, really trying to get ahead of it. Um, so some things we add in the summertime. One, we add daytime classes. You know, we'll do like a 10 a.m. class once or twice a week during the week for a couple of reasons. One, you know, kids are off from school, so they're home and they can do it. But we also try to get ahead of mom and dad fighting with them to get out of the pool, you know, fighting with them to play with their friends. You know, they take a class on a Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. They're not doing anything yet. They can, you know, get it out of the way before all the fun stuff of the summer. And we've done that for a few years now. And that's always helped with our retention. And then someone else put on this in the chat, which is awesome, like a summer uh, t-shirt tie day party. Mr. Booker, do you want to talk about what you do for that? Hmm. Yeah, what we do at the beginning of summer, uh, we do, uh, we start a summer t-shirt tie dye party. People order a white school t-shirt. It's got our logo on the front and on the back. But other than that, it's a plain white base. And uh, we have a set of, uh, we, we start that up about three or four weeks out from the actual event. And then uh, we out, outdoors in front of the school, we do, uh, we set up the tie dye tables. Uh, what, uh, we run on a regular lesson schedule for this. You just come in for your regular lesson, come a little early. Get your shirt tied up, get it into soak in the soda ash solution. Come in and do your lesson. And then at the end of your lesson, you can pull your shirt out of soak, apply the dye to it. We give them all the help they need. Uh, we've got all the materials on hand. But uh, we've been doing this for quite a few years now. People will wear those shirts for years. They are proud of them. They're something they made. It just gives them a little bit of extra stake in the school. And this year it went over particularly big because nobody had been able to do in-person events for a long time. And we were able to do this outside. People could actually get together safely. And it was incredibly popular. And we had uh, most of our students participated and family members could participate too. It's yeah, a I good love that. revenue. Hmm? No, I said, I love that. That's awesome. You know, it's a, it's a good revenue earner and it's just, it builds incredible goodwill. Yeah, super cool. And thanks for sharing, Mr. Booker. There was something, I forget where we read it, Mr. B, but what furniture is like most often brought when you move like to a new house, right? And you, most people would think it's, oh, whatever's the most expensive you bring with you. What it turns out to be most of the time is Ikea furniture because of all the work you do to put it together. You like, mm -hmm. you cherish that so much more. And what you said about people, you know, really embrace the fact that they kind of like, you know, built their t-shirt, they made their t-shirt. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, you know, they put like their, you know, blood, sweat and tears into their tie dye that day. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we try to do some similar things too, right? Just, you know, we kind of hit a little extra hard on like special events that we would do the rest of the year just to keep like the excitement going throughout the summer. So easy ones that we do that are super low cost, crazy hair day, you know, the kids figure out whatever they want to do for that. And you know, you'll have kids coming with like mohawks and blue hair and all that good stuff. Um, freeze pop day, you know, we'll buy a bunch of freeze pops and give them out after class. And you'd be amazed. I'm sure every kid has like a freezer full of freeze pops but you know, they'll insist on coming to karate to get their free one, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. He um, said one, kids, and I'm like, what day is that, Michael? Or, yeah, or adults, free stop day, super fun. Um, it's coming up in two weeks. Um, water balloon day is always super awesome. We buy uh, stores like Five Below or whatever toy store exists now. They have those, those water balloons that fill up like a hundred at once. 
and we'll do after class, we'll do like fun water balloon drills. And it's nothing, I mean, I'm by far the least creative person in our organization. You know, some of it is me and Casey are just throwing a water boom, balloon back and forth. And we take a step back until it pops on one of us. And you just trying to find fun ways. Of course, we're still teaching martial arts. We're still doing our regular classes, but have some cool bonus stuff. Um, Ninja Star Day, we'll order like the rubber, like suction cup Ninja Stars. And we'll draw, you know, targets on the mirrors in the school or on the doors. And you'll throw them after class. But just something where you're almost like a cliffhanger on a TV show where, you know, you got to come back next week to see what's going to happen on the TV show. Like, that's what we try to make this summer. Like, oh, if you thought this week is fun, you got to come back next week for Ninja Star Day or Crazy Hair Day or whatever it is. Um, anybody else have any cool, fun uh, summer themes or uh, events? Mr. Brenner, anything you think I'm missing? I should answer. I thought it was awesome. Oh, you're so, you're so complimentary. Um, the one thing that another one of my clients I was talking to a couple weeks ago, uh, you I'm sure everyone remembers field day like in yeah. elementary school so they had different so if based on the color of your logo and your school colors and stuff one team for example if you're red black and white one team is red and one team is black you know all the people that sign up and they do you know tug of war and they do crazy sack potato races and they do the hula hoop jump ropes and and all that cool stuff and it's like a it's it's like a field day you know it takes a day it takes a few hours to do so it's a great thing how you had mentioned earlier michael that they're available during the day. So kind of like a one day camp almost, but you know, you have this whole competition going on and obviously you can turn that into, you know, some martial arts related events as well. So kind of like a tournament against each other. So I thought that was a really cool idea too. Yeah. I'm going to file that away under um, great ideas that we used to do, but then forgot about until you just brought it up again. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the first is, um, I, anyway, that's a perfect tie in too. the Olympics are this summer. I don't know when they start. But you can do a whole Olympic theme week where you divide your school into different teams and it's all week long. And, you know, you could even do things, you know, if we're talking about retention, hopefully you're building a community at your school where like the blue team doesn't have enough points. Hey, blue team, you better reach out to your team members and get them to class this week right. to make sure, you know, we get our points and you can make it, you know, a, a, you know, they're kind of like, oh, you got to come, come on. We need, we, we need your help. But yeah. Really cool way to do it. Um, the other thing we do, uh, since you, that you reminded me, we call it like our ticket tornado contest. So we'll start this next week. And every time you come to class, you get, I mean, literally a little paper ticket that, you know, you get at a carnival. Every time you bring a friend to class, you get a ticket. We'll, you know, award tickets during the class. Like, oh, Kristen, you're listening so great. You get a bonus ticket. And at the end of the week, you know, we pull them for prizes. And the prizes are a combination of what's left over at the school that we didn't sell at some point. And five below. I mean, it's not, you know, we're not giving away Xboxes, but that, you know, I find most of our kids already have that stuff. Like, you know, the kids have a DS, they have all that. The other things that, you know, might not be a big monetary value, they're like, you know, fighting over at the end of class. Um, so just another way to like, hey, you gotta come in and earn your tickets. And the more you come, the more tickets you get just to keep that retention going. We Let's did something oh. similar to that. Sorry, I'm going to chime in just real quick. We Please. did something similar to that with our baseball team. Um, I would go to the dollar store and I would load up um, on just dollar items that kids love. And we had a superstar of every practice in every game. And I tell you what, everybody wanted some silly string. They were, the, they were there all the time and they still know me as coach silly string. So yeah, that's great. I love silly <laughs> string. Like glow sticks are a big hit with kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Silly string, love it. Cool. All right, so last thing, and I want to be respectful, you know, about everybody's time and make sure we all, you know, can implement some things. So talking about summer holds, right? This is all like fun things we can do for retention. So for us, and we'll kind of go through the process. Can I share my school? Oh, I can share my screen. Cool. Everybody can see that? Yes. So this, you know, we role played and drilled this, you know, weeks ago, you know, at the end of spring. So we knew no matter how hard we try with all of our pre-framing, we always get, you know, hey, we're going away. Hey, we need to take a break. Da, 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 da. So we worked really hard to upstream and to make sure our team was ready. So this is what all of our schools got, all the collective schools got, okay, step-by-step step how we're going to handle this. So number one, and I think the mistake we get tricked into sometimes is someone calls us on the phone or 99% of the time now sends a text message we try to solve it via text or via phone. So you'll see step number one for us is, hey, I can help you next time you come to class, let's talk then. And we wanna get them in the building to have that conversation face-to-face, -face, right? And 
sometimes like you kind of have to train yourself to not just, you know, for me, I'm such like a problem solver. I just want to like deal with it. I have to really like take a breath and be like, we're going to solve this on Tuesday when you come in. So that's step number one. We're going to have this conversation in person. Number two, you know, Casey tells me she's going on vacation. I'm going to just have a conversation with her first. Like, oh, that's awesome. Where are you going? Da, 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 da. Like just building that rapport and that relationship with your families. Um, and then for us, our policy, and this, you know, what we share with them. So we don't hold tuition. We can always hold your time for you though. Do you want to make that up with private lessons before you go? So we have something to practice. So Johnny has something to practice while he's away. Or would you rather make it up when they get back? But either way, he'll be on track for belt promotion in August. And one of the things that's not in here, but we talked about is, you know, no parent wants their child to fall behind. So we make it really clear if, hey, if they take these two weeks off, you know, belt testing for us only comes up every three months, they're going to fall behind the other kids in class. And 98% of the time when it's framed that way, the parent's like, oh, we're only going for a week anyway. Yeah, we'll just make it up either extra group classes or private lessons. But the, the, the framing of it is really important. So Johnny doesn't fall behind in his training and he stays on track with everybody else he's in class with. Um, if, and that's for, if they're going for anything less than a month, that's a super, super easy solution. Um, if it's, you know, we have some families that go back to India for a few months or they're, you know, doing this big extravagant summer long thing. So that comes back to our virtual options. So in a perfect world, we have them, uh, you know, make it up virtually. They can train with our pre-recorded classes, what we call our on-demand classes. They can jump on <laughs> Zoom so they can stay on track and then we'll still help them get caught up when he's back, but all that good stuff. Um, if they're resistant to all of that and we find if we do everything right, to pre-frame it, this is the minority, right? We've been talking about it for weeks, staying on track for the summer. We, you know, explained it the right way. We did it in person. We have a good connection with the family. I mean, none of this matters if you don't really have a connection with your students anyway, and they think what you do is just baseball or soccer or any other activity, right? If this is really an education for them, this usually doesn't happen. But for the ones that do, hey, we just don't want to pay. We want to come back in September, da 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 We have a paperwork they fill out that's super clear, hey, it's on hold from here to here. On this date, your tuition restarts. We have them okay it. So like we're all on the same page. They get a copy of it. And then, I mean, we're pretty like, hey, we agreed that September 1st, your tuition restarts. <coughs> September 1st, their tuition restarts. You know, we enter into member solutions, put it on hold for those. But like, whether they're back in that building or not, that tuition is coming, but you know, that's what we all agreed to. And then of course we do things while they're away to make sure they're not forgetting about us. So if, you know, one of our families is going down the shore for the summer, we'll find out their address down the shore, send them a postcard there. Like, Hey, hope you're having a great time at the beach. Can't wait to see you back. The week before they come back, there'll be a note in our book. We'll send another postcard. We'll send a video message like, Hey, Sarah, can't wait to see you. It's all just remember whenever people take time off, you know, they replace the time they were training with something else and they replace the money they were spending on tuition with something else, right? You know, they're not just like keeping it in a bank somewhere. They just do other things. So we really need to make sure we're on top of it the entire, entire time. Um, but we find for us that the right pre-framing, the right, you know, mindset for them, um, it's a super small percentage that really put on hold, you know, at all. Mr. B, anything you think I'm missing with that? I... I think that was awesome. You know, the key I think is to be super strong with it. And then uh, just like a little pro tip, he talk, keeps talking about postcards. If you don't know, the post office sells postcards just like stamps. And I think that's by far the most inexpensive. It's the postcard postage printed on a postcard. So all you have to do is write out your words on it and the address. You're not like buying a postcard and then buying a stamp. It all comes as like one piece. And again, it's just like buying stamps at the post office. Um, and they're the easiest and most economical way to do anything. And we buy them, you know, hundreds at a time and it's awesome. Yeah. It seems easier now. You just order them online and post up a sense of It's great. Cool. So I want to be, listen, it's one 30. I want to be super respectful of everybody's time. Anybody else though, have anything like, Hey, this is awesome. I need to share this or Sarah, Kristen, Casey, anything you think that our team should know too? The only thing that I like to kind of redirect people to is to like Solomon said, stay strong in it. Don't 
when you have a policy, don't make exceptions for individual people. No matter how big or small your school is, it's the smallest community in the world. And they all talk and they all. So if, if you let that policy slide for one person, it's certainly going to slide for other people. Um, your rent is still due if you don't own your school. Your lights still need to be paid and you are still there teaching classes. And I really love how Michael focused especially on the option for keeping the online courses. We've been saying um, since March of last year, uh, no matter what happens, don't stop online courses. Maybe forever, but that, I mean, long-term is what it is. We're not there yet, but People have not been accustomed and a lot of our clients have found great income from having those things available. So while a lot of this stuff does need to be done in person, having the ability to jump on once a week from a virtual standpoint for, you know, the more basics forms, this, that, the other thing can really help your income and, and help to keep people engaged, especially in situations like we're talking about now when they go away. So it's definitely not the time yet to give up all of online. And I'm just really glad that you mentioned that. Yeah, hundred percent. Should we uh, tell everybody what their free present is before we sign off? Does anybody have any questions also for us? Yeah. No questions. You're so good at explaining, sir. Oh my God, I'm amazing. I always have a master communicator. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, Sarah mentioned the beginning, you know, a few, uh, Months ago now, you know, Mr. Brenner and our partners, we started what we call the Martial Arts Collective. And for years and years and years, you know, we were asked to be consultants and to be coaches. And the thought truly for us was there's so much great information out there. Member Solutions has so many great things. There's so many great consultants. And we learn from all of them. And we have nothing unique to say. Like, you know, you can go learn it from them and we'll stay focused on growing our schools and do our thing. And awesome. And then with COVID, you know, our schools took a bit of a dip in March and April or April and May, whatever it was. But you know, we came out stronger through it. You know, we opened new schools, we invested in real estate, you know, and we really realized through that, hey, we have something unique to offer, something that, you know, can be a benefit to the industry. So we put together what we call the collective. And the collective, you know, kind of Sarah explained it perfectly. It's really meant to be a, a complete business system for your school without, you know, without being action karate. It's not meant to be a consulting or license or franchise, any of that but you get to tap into all the systems and all the structure and all the trainings that all of our schools get to do. So member solutions, really cool. Arranged for all of you guys. Anybody who watched the recording too can reach out to get a free week to check it out. So, you know, hang out with our meetings, hang out with our team, see what it's all about. And if it's great, it's great. If it's not your thing, okay, cool. You know, move on to the next cool thing. Um, but yeah, I think you'll, I know you'll send out this recording and I just will include a link if anybody needs like more information or help with that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, I want to be super respectful of everybody's time. If nobody has any questions, I'm out. Mic drop. <laughs> Pen drop. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, those watching the recording, thank you for taking the time to review this. We'll get that follow-up email out to Michael and Solomon, as always. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your ideas and everything with us. We really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has an awesome rest of their week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Take care.